Well, hey everybody, uh, welcome back again to Monroe Live. I'm here with Neb and Chris, and of course our own Armin. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna be talking about rear wheel steering, basically electronic steering. And we're gonna talk about a little bit about how this interplays right into safety, which is something that I'm very interested in. So Chris, why don't you give us a little background on you and then we'll go to Neb. Yep. Um, my name is Chris Manzius. I've been working for ZF for multiple years. I've been uh, working uh, f from the beginning of the electric steering development. Now it's gearing into uh, steer by wire and I am uh, a steering feel expert. And what I want to show everybody uh, and drive the vehicle today is a steer by wire vehicle. It's yep. a, a development vehicle and a demo vehicle that we use because, we, again, we do global development where our counterparts in uh, Germany and on the Far East in China. So we use that, again, as a development and as a demo vehicle. Cool. Neb? So, Sandy, thanks for the time today. Uh, hello to all the viewers. Uh, my name is Neb Stavanovich. I'm the steering portfolio manager for the North America region on all of our steering products by Wire Technologies for steering. Today we're excited to show all of the Monroe Live viewers our by Wire Technology and also give Sandy and Armin the opportunity to drive our four-wheel steering vehicle, which ultimately will show massive improvements from a handling, low-speed maneuverability, and high-speed maneuverability event. And today I'm joined by Armin. You may have seen him a couple of times already, but uh, Armin, why don't you uh, let everybody know what you do for a living. Um, I'm one of the lead engineers at Monroe and Associates and I uh, have to do a lot with chassis, tires and wheels and so um, I'm super excited to be able to drive these vehicles today and you know even you know get some um, insights about the steering feel and all the advantages that come with these uh, marvelous new systems. And with that let's jump in a car and go for a ride. So ultimately, we're going to go through this parking course. I'm going to loop it all the way back around. I'm going to run through the first maneuver. We're going to um, do it uh, with the AKC system on, and then we have the same parking maneuver. We're going to have you do it with the AKC system off. So ultimately, we can just do it right through here uh, on the tablet interface, yeah. and you'll experience uh, the capabilities uh, and you know maybe a little bit of discomfort with not having that increased uh, degree of maneuverability. So. I'm gonna, we'll stage it back after you guys do each individual maneuver, but what we're gonna do first, again, the AKC system is on. We're gonna come in here, and then I'm gonna have you guys do each uh, parking within this area. So we do have our guides here. They can also provide some assistance. So I'll just crack the, the windows so we can uh, get yeah, some direction. Yeah. Yep, and so again, you can see uh, uh, direct readout. So welcome to Michigan. Uh, ultimately, we have uh, obviously these long wheelbase vehicles and uh, I always turn on the 360 so you ultimately can uh, also get spatial awareness of the vehicle. So here you go parking a big truck uh, in Michigan right so very easy with the AKC system right. So coming out we're going to now turn the system off maintaining the 360 cameras full situational awareness backing out And now we go to my least favorite configuration, normal production. So as you guys heard me say earlier, I, I absolutely believe in this technology uh, as much as I do my own family. You, you're gonna experience a significant benefit here, right? So it's the same spacing as you guys saw, right? We've not done anything. So this is standard production F-150, right? Uh, so you have to take two kicks at the cat. Yep. We've changed nothing with the spacing, right? What's changed now is mm. you no longer have the adaptation of rear wheel steering, right? So I personally see this maneuver 
being done often in you know shopping districts yeah. within the metro detroit area right most times people often also um back into parking spots right and so if you recall on the video we were centered in the lane right mm -hmm. what do we have now we have a slight offset trajectory right, right. so we're not really in the spot from a centered perspective okay, okay so the akc system on so go in give me a normal everyday michigan parking okay so um we're going to be um parking in here and this is with the um rear steering on active so i have active sorry and i have to make sure i don't hit anything now this is my first time driving this completely so let's just see if i can do this correctly and da da da, -da correct so we're uh we're square to the world i believe and my biggest problem is that um i'm uh <laughs> i'm i'm not quite used to the fact that this is turning so sharp we have one of these f-150 lightnings and um uh, and quite frankly um i'm not used to actually uh this well, level just, of maneuverability this, lever, this level of maneuverability and i just want to make sure that i am square to the world and now i am so let's try this let's get out of here first so now we're we're in normal mode and i'm going to try and get into this parking space which uh, i don't think i can <clears throat> see i wouldn't even <laughs> i wouldn't even park in this one it's too damn close um let me give you some 360 camera well that'd be great but i'm going to watch this guy uh, waving me on uh, there we go <laughs> So this is uh, why um, my wife doesn't like driving the uh, F-150 a heck of a lot. And that's because it takes like four times to get into something like this. Um, yeah, night and day, huh? Oh my God. Massive difference. I'm, uh, I'm not really interested in smashing your vehicle yeah. today. I mean, normally I, I wouldn't give a damn, but. Where crooked is thing, a question mark at the moment. Yeah, I, uh, I'm crooked all over the place here. Like I said, I would just bypass this parking spot. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get in this time. <clears throat> Back to the 360. Yeah, okay, I'll need everything I can get here. I'm I'm gonna have to take four shots at this. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. It's the same parking spot. No changes. Yeah, I know, but what changed is the adaptation of low yeah. wheel steering. Well Yeah. I Remember how I said we actually, you, it's a level of discomfort, right? Because well, you don't I'm have that. I'm discomforted right now. You have I a. I just feel like. Um, you're, you're more constrained, right? So yeah. this is just a low speed maneuverability. Like we said, when we're now in phase, this level of further dynamic performance extends through the whole vehicle operating range. We can do so much with just a few degrees of rear wheel articulation. Okay, well, I think I may be close to shit parking yep. you're you're good i mean i think i think we've demonstrated now that the adaptation of yeah. four-wheel steering especially for long wheelbase platforms mm. significantly benefits in all different regions so uh i'm off by what looks to be about three degrees which would mean under normal circumstances i get out the car look and then i'd say i'm not square and i'd go back and do it again because i'm that kind of guy um this uh this is a great demonstration. Okay, so we just finished off um, a little ride and drive. Um, and um, I would say that it was pretty amazing. Rear steering makes a huge difference in the F-150. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into this ID3 and we're gonna be uh, in a steer by wire uh, type of situation. So Chris, we're in your yes. tender care. Yeah, well, I would like to, uh, to demonstrate the steer uh, by wire vehicle. I want to show you some of the functionality in it so you can experience <clears> it. <throat> but again, as I said to you earlier, we do have two actuators. We have a 
electric steering system and position control in the yeah. front, and we have a torque controller on the hand wheel. So these two actuators, they communicate with a whole bunch of different modules that basically generate the steering feel environment that you feel, you know, in a normal car and a little bit more. Because mm. in our case, we do have variable steering ratio. Okay, that I will show you. Originally, we're going to start with the standard C factor, which is a constant C factor specifically for this vehicle. Then we will change it to a C factor, which is uh, about 10 to 20 percent more than the the base uh, standard C factor. And it will be a function of steering wheel angle, which means as you increase your steering angle, your C factor will change. So your turning will anymore, be much right? faster. So the more you turn, the, the more you more turn, the more, more it's going to turn, turn, right? Yeah. Then we're going to do what we call the yoke mode uh, ratio, which is basically three plus times as much as the standard C factor. The standard C factor, just for you know your idea, yeah, right. fifty-one millimeters per revolution of the hand wheel yoke is about 170 at dry park and as you keep increasing the vehicle speed that reduces because if you don't reduce it the vehicle will be very dirty very yeah. nervous yeah okay so we reduce it probably about i would say uh, 80 millimeters per revolution of c factor so if we looked at um, lock to lock or whatever um, for uh, for degrees, what would that lock to lock on the st on the on the base uh, C factor? It's one and three quarters one way. Okay. If we go to the the steering angle, uh, uh, the the ratio, which is a function of the steering angle, you will get less than one and a half. But when you go into the yoke, uh, you will only do about 180 degrees mm. full travel on one side. So, so, so lock to lock, lock, lock is one, one, one uh, cycle of the, yeah. one revolution of the hand wheel will cover the whole travel. 360, right. yeah. Okay, good. Well, okay. Let's can, go in. can we also play with the feedback? Can you turn it on and off or change? I will, I will you show you some of that effect. I will show you. I cannot show you everything because I have to change a lot of filtering to be able to do that. Mm. But you will feel the type of feedback that we get on the road. I like for you just to, to drive this around the parking area. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start first with the, the constant C factor that this vehicle was built for. Okay. okay, what we've done is we've taken out the electric steering system that this vehicle had before and we put in uh, a system, uh, electric steering system in position control. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we under here we put our uh, hand wheel actuator, which is basically in torque mode. Okay, okay, good. So just drive it around for a while and I will start setting off some of the the modules so you can okay. understand right. what's going on okay good okay. let's try that and what kind of speed you yeah at? just very slow speeds we don't need to go crazy you know i just because okay. i want you to so 20 to is feel. um yeah 20, 20 is, is fine okay this is normal mode right and uh, mm -hmm. what we do the c factor again it's a constant c factor simulates the production c factor yeah. And we use this because we wanted to show how natural the, the steering effort feels in the vehicle uh -huh. with the actual tuned C factor because it basically matches the, the behavior of the whole vehicle. Uh -huh. Okay. So let me let me just start first. I will disable. Actually, let me give you a little bit more idea of how we do things, right? All right. So we do have a steering input that we read from our uh, sensor here, right? Uh -huh. We send that signal right to the uh, front wheel actuator, which is in position control. So through the C factor that we uh, simulate, it will ask the uh, front wheels to turn so much, right? Uh -huh. Now, because it's in position control, the, the motor has to overcome the load to basically get to that position, right? 
we look at the motor information and we convert all that intelligently into a rack force, right? Yeah. Then that rack force, we do put it through what we call an inverse boost curve that will give us a torque request to the hand wheel and our torque controller on the hand wheel generates that torque for you. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's how all of the stuff works, right? So, so this is what we're gonna do first, right? So we okay. can understand things a little better. Yes. Okay, so if you stop the vehicle, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect my forces from the front actuator that come back to the steering wheel. Okay, so when mm. I do that, and I will do that right now. Do I need to put this in park? No, first? you just oh, okay. turn the wheel right now and see what you feel. Nothing. <laughs> you see how nothing, right? Yeah. Look at that. Basically, so I've disconnected my loading in the front from the hand wheel. So you don't feel nothing. Even if you turn the wheel, look at that. No. It stays it's, there, right? It's going to stay wherever it wants, I guess. Right. Yeah. See that? So now I'm just going to do one more thing. I'm going to put it back. So take your hands off. You see yeah. how it moved? That yeah. basically generated the balance of forces yes. between the front and the rear, just like a normal car, mm -hmm. right? What I'm going to do now, we do have another uh, functionality, what we call the overall steering hysteresis that helps the behavior of the efforts on center. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that off. Now, just feel this, just like small inputs on center, okay? I'll, I'll take that hysteresis off. You feel how lighter yeah, it is? Suddenly, yeah. Right. So basically what we do in steering systems, you have to use some hysteresis to get a good feedback. You know, we do that with electric yeah. steering and we do that with steer by wire. It's basically the same idea. Mm -hmm. So we put a little hysteresis to get fairly good on-center behavior. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to put that back. Okay. Now I like for you to go around the corner and just like put in an input and just let the hand wheel come back to straight. Okay. Okay. Very you don't have to go very fast. Around 10 kph is fine. Yeah, and just let the hand wheel go. Okay. So now I'm going to take we do have capability for active return. Now I took active return out, so your returnability is not going to be as fast, but it's going to respond to the actual forces generated. You see how it slowed down? Yeah. See how it slowed down? Now, this is basically responding to the rack loads of the tires. At low speeds, we're enhancing it with active return. Okay, so I'm going to put it back on again so you can feel the difference. It's back on. See how quick yeah. it does? It's, um, yeah. hmm. so, so there's a lot of functionality we can put in and out. These are basically the functions that I want to show you fairly quick so you can understand how everything works. Yeah. So now you can just drive it and you, we can go down the road okay. and you give me your general impressions and... Uh, so um just drive it like a normal vehicle make some lane changes this is our own you know so you tell me how you feel about it well it's very responsive i um like it depends on, of course on how fast you're going and i'm you know you say it's an open course but <clears throat> surprises happen so i want to be able to see what's going on Right. So let's apex a turn here, whatever. <clears throat> it it feels it feels like um, you know it feels like a little bit of a sports car. So it's um, certainly um, if I move fast, it it keeps up. So it it's not a it's not really a race car, but it, it certainly does feel positive it feels you know it feels it feels really good yeah that seems a little bit faster yeah. it seems sportier right? yeah, it's, yeah, like a, it's, it's like a sport like mode the ratio yeah. is the, the ratio is a so, little higher so you, you, you go from 51 to about 68 mm -hmm. to 71 so you'd enable the 
OEM to put in a sport mode, sport button that now yes. makes the chassis feel more responsive, right? Yes. More, more responsive to input. Nowadays they'll increase the force it takes, fake feel, right? Like they make it, they slack right. it off, but right. that's not really changing anything dynamically. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely feels faster. Now, you know, when you change the, when you change the ratio, it will require that you retune to make sure that you have smooth operation for all the modules yeah, yeah. that work. Of course, yeah. And now your bushings aren't really, well, not your bushings, but uh, they'd be more in tuning than just what you did there. Right. right. Uh, the whole package. They right. will be more tuning. Yeah. Hey everybody, we, uh, Aaron and I just got a, uh, a great ride. Um, I will tell you, I'm in a good mood. I really like pretty much everything I saw. Um, okay, I can't figure out what to do with crab mode, but I will tell you that from a steering standpoint, I can't, I just love this. I love rear wheel steering. I love, uh, I'm gonna, you know, I was debating whether I should say this or not, but I will tell you, if, if VW would have come out with an ID4 that was tuned like that ID3, there'd be a lot less Tesla sales. I don't know what you guys did to make that thing hum the way it did, but I was pretty, and actually I think uh, Armin might even, might even agree with me on this one. I, I was really impressed. What did you think? I, that was uh, great. I think there's two things that really stood out to me. One your tuning expertise, right? Because just same platform, ID4 to ID3, essentially should be similar. This was a fantastic driving car, right? When it's just set to its um, factory mode in terms of the only change being having a, um, a steer by wire system. And then secondly, when you put it in yoke mode, that ID3, right? essentially feels like a sports car. Maybe not quite when you get up to limit handling, traction limit, but any, if you're just using it reasonably, it feels like you're driving a Miata, right? And I am a Miata driver, and it's super nimble, fun, and then hit of a button, you relax it, you're just cruising down the road, you're getting from A to B, and it uh, opens up a whole world of um, what that you can give to the customer. So it's. Cool stuff yeah, sure. I, I think it. I think it can. It really shows the depth and capability of what steer by wire can do yeah. from a just a performance standpoint, yeah. right in a vehicle. So well, I'll tell you. Um, I remember when the uh, first ZF transmission started coming out, and um, and <laughs> I mean there was no comparison to what everybody else had. I think you guys have really uh, nailed it with uh, steer by wire and. Um, and rear wheel steering. I mean, <laughs> I was wondering, <laughs> I was really wondering how you guys are gonna stay alive in the transmission mode with the rapid pace that EVs came out with. But uh, I'm very, very, very excited. Actually, you know what? Maybe what we should do uh, to start this off is, why don't you give us a little bit or give the audience a little bit of um, information on what it is that steer by wire and um, and um, maybe how you've enhanced it. Because like I said, um, both Armin and I were really impressed uh, by that, uh, by that uh, ID3, uh, really impressed. And I, I'm pretty sure that that is not the way it comes from, um, from VW right now. So yeah. I don't know who wants yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, again, Cerebro Wire, I think just completely enhances the function, functionality, um, especially when we talk about the, the software defined vehicles and, um, and bringing the steering features into play relative to the um, Steer by Wire application. Um, definitely, Steer by Wire, you know, you're able to really do, um, have more dimensions of uh, freedom relative to tuning and getting the, the feel that you might yeah. want. Um, I think there's a, a lot of people are a little bit 
uh, shy away a little bit from it because we're not sure if you can really get the, you know, natural feel that you could yeah. get um, like in a Miata or sports car. And I think, you know, with the amount of uh, knobs and, and variables you have with the, uh, with the tuning, you can really get there and get the yeah. steer feel. Yeah. Yeah. I think what you guys most experienced today, right, as we talked earlier, I think Sandy used the characterization of the shish kebab, right? Yeah. When you think of it as a total system from a vehicle perspective, that mechanical, excuse me, that mechanical stick, right, is a fixed variable, right? As Nick talked about, the beauty of all of our biowire actuation is it will outperform anything that you can do yeah. as a person, right? Your body, you can only turn the steering wheel so much. With the absence of that mechanical connection, we have such a dynamic range of capabilities. We can give it to you however each individual DNA of the customer needs to be. We have so much more capability from a safety perspective, from a steer feel perspective, from future features. Uh, we talked about earlier the example of you know the Michigan roads. All these potholes, which are all over the place here in Michigan, you get a lot of disturbance right back up that column. We can tune all that out, make it yeah. quiet, and just make your, your ride that much more enjoyable. And then on the flip side, when you are in that performance configuration, that dynamic variable ratio, it's limitless in terms of whatever configuration that each individual client wants to basically yeah. tailor it to that point. Yeah, but I think what we really need to do is talk about that safety issue. You guys must have mentioned it about 50 times when we were in the car. I don't know what kind of bad impression you got of me, but I, uh, I will tell you, as far as I'm concerned, um, safety is the number one requirement. If you're, if you're an engineer, that's the first and foremost thing that should come to mind. And I believe that ADA, this is an enabler. Without, without electric steering, or sorry, let me rephrase that, without steer by wire, I do not know how, um, how we'll ever get any safer than where we are right now. The ADAS systems are great, you know, uh, they, they can react quickly and whatnot, but without the ability to use steer by wire, there's still gonna be a problem. There's still gonna be that, that problem associated with how do I move that steering wheel and what are you gonna be doing when you're holding on to the steering wheel? With your system, that goes away because the steering wheel becomes inert and, um, and basically I can steer that car and it, I don't want or need any input from the driver Absolutely. because it can't move fast enough anyway. And then actually when it's decoupled, Sandy, the, the benefit there is if you're in an aversive uh, base of maneuver, right? You don't have that hand wheel coming back and then potentially causing any damage exactly. to the occupants. Yeah. By having right. an averse, a, a base of maneuver, we can have uh, the actuator completely outperform anything a human can put yeah. into and then get into a safe state. Right. So the redundancies that we have both on the front and the rear steer actuators, there's a significant amount of effort with our systems team, our safety team, all of the engineering disciplines mm -hmm. to look at all those various safety cases and make sure that we have a robust solution right. in every situation. As you heard me say in the car a million times, safety is number one in everything we do at ZF. Well, I didn't know it was exactly a million, but I figured it was damn yeah. close. <laughs> <Sounds> yeah. <like laughs> that. yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, Sandy, you mentioned the, um, you were talking about ADAS and I mean, that's, um, and and um, that's one of the things that we're trying to also accomplish with steer by wire is is having a say seamless transition from being an everyday driver in the vehicle to letting the vehicle drive itself. And again, that's that's what steer by wire is also able to do because you get the um, you know you get the capability of having this steering wheel that now can get stowed or or you know um, retracted out of the way of the driver um, to where the, the it opens up new possibilities in the vehicle as well. Um, we've all, we talked earlier about the, um, also the dormant wheel concept where today in a, in a regular conventional EPS, you still have the steering wheel that can spin around and kind of be distracting and, and even maybe unsafe as well in the end. Yeah. So with the steer by wire, we can, you know, we're, we're now decoupled from the road wheel. We can enact this, um, yeah. you know, uh, dormant steering wheel feature and, uh, and again, uh, brings a whole nother level of comfort and, uh, desire to the customer for the uh, steer by wire application. It, it provides weight benefits. I mean, uh, another example is oftentimes uh, many of our clients have left hand and right hand drive versions. With the advent of steer by wire, you no longer have to have different mechanical configurations because it's really agnostic to the vehicle because you no longer have an intermediate shaft that's connecting to a column mm -hmm. that has to have that specific tower angle from the left hand drive or the right hand drive. So that actuator can be deployed in multiple vehicle regions without having any significant investment 
for any unique tooling. For and that's one of the things we did too. I mean, mechanically in this feedback actuator to the steering wheel, we've designed it to be very compact. A lot of our feedback has been we've got one of the most compact units out there. So it can package the same unit on nearly every vehicle you can get out there. So you also get economies of scale in there as well, right? You know, today there's so many variants on every platform yeah. that you've got to get. Now it's a basically a one and done type situation. You can get in there and you see how you can just change the feel all through the software only and tuning. Yeah. You can put it on all of your vehicles. And, and the more compact the system is, the more crush space you get for the occupants. Again, yeah. introducing more safety, right? Yeah. And I think, an interesting thought is what it does to the concept of a proper skateboard platform, right? Where you now, like you were saying, uh, it doesn't matter if it's right hand, left hand side, but you can imagine that this is very interesting from your OEM perspective that you can finally produce the skateboards that we've seen for decades, right? Where you just put on the, the top hat that you want and refresh and have this just optimized underneath and you're just able to you know, provide different yeah. vehicles to the customer, but underneath it's... I mean, ultimately, yeah. it, to me, it transcends multiple vehicle applications, right? You know, in the area of electrification, it allows for uh, higher density or higher volume of batteries. Also, it allows you to have more flexibility with the propulsion space. Additionally, when you look at, as Mike said, all the different variants that we have, all the different engine options, by having that condensed, you know, we hear and discuss with many OEMs about having a corporate common type of actuator, right? Having a corporate common hand wheel actuator can go from an A segment vehicle all the way to a heavy truck because it's really agnostic to the yeah. consumer. Yeah. Well, the thing that we haven't mentioned is, as well is uh, weight. Everybody, I mean, people kill for a couple of uh, grams. Absolutely. And um, and in fact, when I was teaching in China, it was, um, you know, one gram every engineer every day. and. That's how we got the weight of the vehicles down for Chinese cars. Well, if I'm looking at that, that, uh, that intermediate shaft, and normally you've got at least one universal joint on it, I mean, that's a lot of weight that suddenly vanishes. Absolutely. And, um, and so I, I think that there's, I think all the way around, it's 100% it's better. It's just tragic it took so long sure. to get us to this point. Well, and again, going back to that mechanical connection, you'll have fixed variable or you know, <clears throat> ratios from a steering perspective. That's all gone, less tooling. You don't have to have unique broaching, unique forgings, et cetera. Yeah. You can program it exclusively into that area. So when you look at the whole uh, value stream from a cost perspective, we're reducing complexity, right? Yeah. I mean, the best part is yeah. no part. More exactly variance of right. parts is you know, additional cost, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's a, so many layers. And I think that's what you have to look at, steer by, steer by wire. It's a really a total value proposition, right? I mean, yeah. it, there's more costly elements relative to the redundancies and the electronics right. and that, but it, it's the total value of what it can bring to the automakers. Well, here's, here's the other thing. Um, if we're, I mentioned weight, um, I also am a big fan of 48 volts. It took a long time to get here, pretty much, uh, 50 years, 60 years. Um, that's something else that, uh, that um, maybe, uh, I'm, I didn't ask this before, but is this a 48 volt system or could this be a 48 volt system? You drove a 12 volt system. Yeah. Um, can it be 48 volt? Yes. And we're, I mean, we're seeing, it's really OEM specific what they're looking for. Are they willing to make the jump from 12 to 48? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we also offer solutions at 12 volt with uh, higher battery current draw to get the, the higher power output. But we've got solutions that can go 12 or 48 to get there, so we can mate with whichever OEMs we're, we're talking how, to. How much does it help you go into 48 volts in terms of motor sizing, et cetera? Good question. Um, it, it, does, it provides a better benefit to get that power out. I mean, there are some, some trade-offs, but it gets better to use voltage to get you power than to, to use current. So you got to really look at what does the vehicle need. Bigger, heavier vehicles, it's probably better to go to 48 volt. Smaller vehicles, lighter, they might not need the power output. So maybe it's more economical to stay at 12 volts on those because the rest of the vehicle systems are there. Yeah, but and in, in, I mean, we've seen examples of applications where the threshold of the current is even maybe even not enough. So, so really the best solution really is going to 48 volt. But depending on the OEM and what their strategies are, you know, you, you're kind of limited on, okay, we, we have to develop a high output, ultra high power type power pack 
for the customer that wants to stay with 12 volts. Um, or we could probably easier really shift to 48 volts and go that direction. Okay. So it's really a, 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 it's really something we can tailor and, and adapt to whatever the customer. So really what needs. about the what about the big argument about oh there's nothing out there at 48 volts and we've got to buy all these sensors that aren't you know aren't sitting at 48 volts and on and on any comments on that so i think you know across that athlon you know similarly in our commercial vehicle segment we even support 24 volt architectures right so it's continued to scale uh, again as nick said you know it's really a proposition uh, you know based on each individual oem and where their trajectory is going from a technology perspective i think we all recognize uh, there's a benefit from a thermal management perspective from a sheer wire cross-section perspective right so there's massive weight savings and benefits. We have other technologies that have already existed in 48 volts, such as our, our electromechanical roll control uh, in various OEMs, depending on their topology, you know, step down, have DC to DC converters, right? So there's there's solutions that transcend that, mm. but it, it's really at the present moment, what we're seeing from a voice of the customer perspective, uh, certain uh, elements in the industry are going that route. Others have not yet migrated to that topology. Well, the one thing that people are going to probably want to know a little bit about is redundancy. We talked about it earlier today before we went out on the ride and stuff like that, and probably a lot of that will get cut. So why don't we talk a little bit about the redundancy that's in both the um, electric steering, I keep saying the same thing, steer by wire, um, and, um, and also rear wheel steering. Um, we, we did talk about it before, and I know you've probably getting exhausted about hearing the same stuff no, over and over again, but about our yeah. 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 So why don't we go into so, that? So I think starting off, as Nick mentioned earlier, there's always uh, a focus on dual lane uh, redundancy, right? There's multiple aspects. You have to have uh, abilities to have dual power outlets, right? Yeah. Or dual power capability. Yeah. There's dual communication. There's dual sensing technologies. So as we look at each individual application with the customers, levels of autonomy, that are within the system from a hardware solution or software solution, but also querying the system, right? There's other attributes of the vehicle that we can use as an integrated system. They can also give us reference points that help with respect to, you know, that level of redundancy, right? We use wheel speed sensors, right? We use different sensors within the vehicle that although may not be fully integrated into the system, you can actually take that information off the bus and then extrapolate information that would be relevant right from a handwheel actuation uh, angle perspective, you know, torque, et cetera. So there's there's many layers and, and it's all driven by uh, our safety approach with ISO 26262, which is a standard that all of our OEMs and all of our, the supply base is really focused on. Yeah, and I mean, safety is obviously the number one priority and we always want the system to fail safe, but we also, with this technology, want to fail operational. So we want the driver, if something does happen where you know, something happens, they can feel that they can still drive the vehicle, get it safely, you know, to the side of the road, get it safely home. Um, so we want to really, the, the goal is to have a fail safe, but fail operational type uh, system. Early adaptions of uh, some of the autonomous features, for example, you've experienced the four wheel steering. Uh, an application actually with having four wheel steering, you have the ability of also having a redundant onboard actuator that in the event of the front steer would fail, you have the ability yeah. to get to that fail state, do the trajectory management, light up a mill lamp and say, hey, we are not in an ideal condition, but the vehicle and the occupants are now in a safe state. Yeah, yeah, a limp home or limp, home, uh, limp, limp suicide, side. Yeah. 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 yeah, those are all good things. So let me let me ask you, um, what, um, what do you think the impact's gonna be or how quickly do you think the impact's gonna happen in order to get us to, first off, rear wheel steering is my ultimate goal for everything. And to do that, I got to have, um, I probably got to have um, steer by wire as well. So what, what do you think the, uh, when, do you, when do you foresee um, the, the future being the reality? So from a rear steering perspective, let me talk to that first. So uh, the technology in and of itself continues to go down market, down segment. As we talked uh, currently, from a rear steering perspective, ZF has launched with 19 different OEM brands, uh, and ultimately, I think 74, 75 different vehicle applications. There's a value proposition that 
requires you know making modifications to the rear axle to the suspension geometry so you have to increment and make that step what a lot of our customers are seeing especially with the advent of electrical uh, propulsion systems the vehicles are heavier right mm -hmm. so to achieve the, the dynamic characteristics and the dna that most of our customers have they can only achieve that with four wheel steering because of that yaw gradient and you know the, the kinematic mm -hmm. modification so uh, it continues to, uh, especially also in conjunction with higher levels of autonomy, it really provides additional software functions and features and autonomous comfort capabilities. From mm -hmm. a from a by wire perspective, you know, in, in Nick and Mike can you know explain further. You know, m many more customers continue to look at the technology, obviously because of you know the benefits that we're looking at. Yeah, and I, I mean, um, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but as we roll out steer by wire, it, it appears that the OEMs are using this as an opportunity to really um, say differentiate their brand. Um, and they're looking at bringing it, bringing it out on more say premium type vehicles or applications, maybe some niche applications or even, um, you know, vehicles that are very unique. Um, but I think as we continue to mature the technology um, as we continue to work with the OEMs to, to uh, streamline and be more efficient and bring the cost down, I think you'll see a you know market out there that's really uh, going more and more to steer by wire. Um, in fact, ZF we have uh, three you know we're launching steer by wire in, in, in the three major regions uh, by the end of 2025. So, I mean we're already seeing the impact of this, and uh, more and more customers are are coming to us and, and looking at steer by wire more seriously. Yeah, and you can, you're gonna see, right, like Nick said, it's gonna start maybe on the, the top trim level vehicles, but right. once it gets out there and people experience it, and they're all gonna yeah. say we want it, and we're, it's gonna get pulled into to the other market, so it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Ooh, um, do you think it might also be, you know, not only just first implemented in the, in the top luxury segment, but also maybe, for high efficiency applications, we've sort of touched on the efficiency benefits from reduced rolling resistance, et cetera, from having rear steer, right? Um, and so then additionally from a cost perspective, right, you, you're able to unlock range, uh, reduce battery costs. Um, I would imagine, I'm guessing here, please, I, I think maybe you'd reduce tire noise as well, right? So I think from, yes, on a luxury side of things, but also from a efficiency perspective, it seems like it could enter there um, as well. Longevity as well, as we said, with these bywire technologies. And again, you know, ZF launched its first bywire technology with the AKC system back in 2013. So bywire is not new technology, right? I think there's, it's more maybe of a, confidence from the different OEMs. But as mm. you said, without having those fixed variables mechanically, you have the ability to take software and translate it in a dynamic perspective, right? As the vehicle has longer life, as you have different wear, I mean, the, the capabilities are only a function of what is now programmed from a software perspective. So as we just experienced with the parking maneuvers, right? How many times did we scrub those tires trying to get in the park? And when you turn the, the rear shear system mm. on, right, that ability to go through and, and do the maneuver, right, ultimately resulted in less contact batch wear, right? So as we continue to grow these technologies, again, removing fixed variables in the equation allows for so much more capability at the dynamic level. Um, I'm, I'm almost positive that Eric is gonna start going like this or like that, I'm not sure which yet. But, uh, but anyways, I'd like to thank you all for, uh, like this is some wonderful morning. Um, I mentioned to you that I was very excited about coming here, and I was. When Eric said uh, ZF wants to, and I think in transmissions, show us what they're doing with rear wheel steering and, uh, and steer by wire, uh, that was how fast the decision was made. And a lot of other um, tears get tears. <laughs> I don't, I'm not interested. So I was very, very glad to have you guys invite us down here. I really appreciate it. I had a great time. Even, even Armin probably had a pretty good time. So uh, anyways, thank you all again, and thank you all for watching. You thank you. Thanks, Armin. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Yep.
<laughs> okay. Bye now. We all shook hands. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>